Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to explore with you something that we have touched on a number of times in the past, and I kind of like to bring it all together in, uh, in a package. And it could come under the heading of what I call sequential activation of joints. And it's something that is really important if you want to, to express Jin, but also if you want to be able to move uh, in a way which is fluid and economical, relax, and, and still have that supple power that is, that is promised to us in, in the Tai Chuan. And so the, um, it's something that it's, I think it's important regardless of what style of Tai Chi Chuan you practice. And also if you don't practice Tai Chi, if you're just like a human being that like, would like to move better and, uh, and also to feel more energetically connected, sort of to unkink the hose. And um, a lot of it has to do with being able to free up the energy of the shoulders and something that, you know, usually is addressed, you know, at, at the really beginner level, say like, you know, teacher says, relax your shoulders and says that a thousand times and a thousand times they pop up again and they, and it's because we're really programmed from very early on to, to use that as our first order of, uh, of, of response. And so to be able to override that, you know, I think it actually goes beyond just the learned patterns of, you know, of childhood and actually goes deep into the DNA. It's the way we, we, we learn to, to move. And so to be able to actually bypass that, you got to overcome patterning that is encoded in your, in, in your body mind and uh, to be able to move even more efficiently. And so what we're doing with it is we're learning to, to access the energy gates of Taiji Tren. In particular, the shoulder gate, which is called Ko, and that is um, uh, it's usually, when we talk about it, I usually express it as like a shoulder strike, but a deeper meaning as an energy gate is um, that it's an integrative uh, uh, way of accessing a, a profound whole body uh, energetic connection. And that if your shoulder joints are, are, are locked up, if the muscles around there are locking up your shoulder and holding it in a pattern that is, is not really efficient, you're going to block your energy. And, you know, it's one of the, you know, the things that Yang Cheng Fu, you know, said in, you know, like his 10 commandments, you know, it's like, you know, drop the elbows and, uh, and that's a solution for it, but it's only, only of limited practicality. And you can see it in, in the way that even he does, like, you know, whenever he's, you know, going into a single whip, he's not dropping his elbows. They're, you know, they're very much like if, if he's if he's going extending outward, the elbows are not dropped. They are they're reaching outward. And so we think in terms more of reaching with the elbows as a way of opening the shoulder joint. So then we're getting into elbow gin, which is the Joe energy. And so we have these two things here, and but. To take it actually a little bit farther, we have two other factors, I think, which are even more important. And that is, first of all, starting with the index finger to get actually energetically coherent as your first order of business. So even that you want to practice that so, so much so that it just becomes second nature that that's, you're going to feel, initiate any arm stuff distally, that is from the, the distant point rather than from the shoulder joint. And it's counterintuitive 
That's why I say it's kind of running a, a foul of, of our programming, both learned and inherited, to actually initiate to begin to start out here is it, it seems to be counterintuitive. So we want to initiate there. And the, the next thing which doesn't get mentioned in the literature at all, it is the wrist joint. And um, I found this incredibly uh, valuable to bring awareness to activate the wrist joint. So it's like it's a whole other gate there that never really gets talked about. And, and I think it's, it's really essential for effectively unkinking the hose and the shoulders and to be able to, to access that internal power, that effortless power that we look for in our chin. So the, uh, so in a nutshell, what we're talking about is beginning at the fingers, then the wrists, then the elbows, and then the shoulders whenever we're doing something with the arms. And like I say, this is something that is, yeah, it's, it's counterintuitive. You know, if you tell someone to raise their arm, they're going to do, you know, the way most people raise their arm, which are going to initiate from the shoulder and their arm is going to, their arm is going to be extended outward and, and that's fine. And, but it's a very weak structure in that since your fulcrum is up here, that's a nice long lever and it just is really easy to collapse the muscles and the shoulders just are not that strong. But whenever we activate that whole body energetic connection, beginning with the fingers, elbow, fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulders, then it, you, the whole body is involved with that. And we're talking about the connective tissue system then, which has this, there's a tensegrity that occurs throughout the the connective tissue system that allows it to support much more, uh, much stronger than, than what the muscles, individual muscles are capable of. So, but retraining this, and I know I've talked about this stuff before, but um, retraining it requires a certain amount of attention to get it so that it's kind of creeping in at that really direct response level. That is, it's something you go to it very soon in the process rather than an add-on later. So it um, so if I'm if I'm reaching out with my with my my right arm, you know, there's I'm feeling my finger first, and then my wrist is reaching, and then my elbow's reaching, and then my shoulder comes online. And what happens with that is you get a very graceful movement that is actually much stronger, much more powerful than if you're just reaching out with a, an extended arm. So we're going to uh, play with this a little bit and just really kind of fine tune awareness of these of these components yeah, so that we can, that. Uh, we can, uh, oh, we got, we got a question here. Yes. I have, I have a question. Um, yes. As we move through the exercise, when do we, if we're thinking of activating from well, the finger and then the wrist, at what point do I bring my attention to the elbow? Um, and that's gonna vary depending on the movement. But okay. it, we'll, we'll play with that in this in this exercise. We'll actually do that. So we're uh, we're going to break it down into its component parts so that we can actually we can actually uh, feel into that. That's a, that's a really good question, and you're kind of anticipating what I'm what I'm what I want to do with this. So uh, see see if it works with uh, with what I'm what I'm showing, and then if. If we need more, you know, please interject, and I can uh, I can throw some more in there. Okay, so let's uh, so this can be done sitting or standing, doesn't matter, but uh, um, I think probably good sitting 
you know, or hands resting on a uh, table or something like that, if you're standing. But the idea here is we want to create this sequence in, uh, and, and start to program it into the nervous system because you're always going to go back to what it is you're familiar with. And, uh, and uh, if something you've been doing for many decades, uh, you're probably gonna default to that under any kind of pressure. To be able to learn a new behavior, you gotta actually put in a little bit of work there to get uh, to make that those new neural connections. So the uh, so just sitting with your, your hands in your lap, to just you want to feel the index finger of your right hand, kind of point and reach with that, and and just tune into your body and just notice that that there is an energetic connection that get that occurs with that. You're you're actually creating some energetic coherence. We've done this a thousand times, and um, you know if you're just tuning into this on YouTube, you know you're you get a chance to uh, to play with that, but the idea you point and reach with that, and you can feel a, a connection, you know, all the way down to your feet and through your feet and into the floor, and then just relax that. And so, it's basically you're you're creating that awareness in your right index finger. Now do your left index finger, and create that sensation. So each time you go there. Each time you perform this simple exercise of pointing and reaching with your index figure, with attention to the feeling of it, you are establishing new neural connections. You're creating a groove in your consciousness that makes it easier to do, that makes it something that you can rely on. I'm going to go back to your right hand. And Relax that, and your left hand, feel that. And just notice that calming effect that has, the centering effect, the way it clears your mind to do that. Because we're, whenever we do that, when we feel into the physicality, we actually reach with intention, we shift into a, something where we're accessing more of our brain and our entire nervous system than we ordinarily do when we're just locked to a, into a thinking mode. And now if you point the index finger of your right hand and then just very gently, just reach up with your wrist. Your, arm, your elbow stays down. You can even put that against your body so that you're, it's not moving. So the shoulder's not activating. And a lot of people have trouble doing this, just reaching with the wrist or the finger without tensing up the shoulder. So we're training the body to bypass that, that shoulder impulse. So the energy can flow more freely. You point and you reach with the wrist. Very simple action. And the simplicity of it uh, kind of hides its power. Let's do it with the left hand. You point with the index finger, and then you reach with the wrist. And notice the action is, is this, just up, up. You're, you're reaching up with the wrist. The elbow stays down, left hand, Right hand, point, reach. And notice as you do that, there is a shift, an internal shift occurring. You're changing your energy. You're changing your body's relationship. You're changing your state of being. You're moving into a super conscious state. Just that simple action. So now keeping your elbow down, you point, you bend the wrist, and then just very gently reach up with the wrist and bring it down. 
Let me do that again. Notice how very relaxed your whole arm is as you're doing this. There's no tension there in your arm. There's the mu muscles are, are cooperating with the with the adventure, but it's it's uh, very light. And again, you know the simplicity and the relaxed nature of this kind of belies its power. There's a lot of effective power that's being generated in this simple movement. Now go to your left hand, you point and bend the wrist and then just reach up and down. Point, reach up and down. The trick of this is the conscious mind is really eager to turn all that into an algorithm and say, yeah, yeah, I got that. I got that idea. Boom. And moving on. And because and it gets bored with something as stupid simple as reaching with your wrist. But the more we can actually feel into that, the more we can bypass the need for the conscious mind to be amused. We can amuse ourselves with the, the feeling and all the information that we are getting from, from that. And there's a lot of work being done in the nervous system to create this new way of being. So now we're going to we can go a little farther. So we're so now point, reach with the wrist. Now reach with the elbow. It's a little tricky here. And that what are you doing? You're kind of reaching down initially, just enough to open the shoulder joint. Boom. So there's, so we're not dropping the elbow so much as reaching down with the elbow. And that creates that open there in the shoulder joint as you do that. This point, wrist, reach with the elbow. So notice that we're, there's a sequence here. It's not to say it won't work if you violate the sequence. It just works better if you do it this way. Point, reach, elbow. You do it intentionally enough times and eventually the body, body mind gets the joke and says, oh yeah, that's what we do in this situation. It knows that that, because that feels good. And we turn, we do the left hand. You point, wrist, reach down to the elbow. And down. point, wrist, reach with the elbow. So notice that you're, as you do that, you're creating this downward pull on the arm that kind of opens up the shoulder joint. So you can, oh, it's a very light, very effortless kind of thing. So just very gently alternate finger, wrist, reach with the elbow. Finger, wrist, reach with the elbow. Finger, wrist, reach with the elbow. You know, for me, this was you know, something that came from hundreds of hours of vigorous push hands to be able to find out how to best move, how to move most efficiently and effectively. Finger, wrist, reach with the elbow. So now we can we can actually go finger, wrist, reach with the elbow, and now we're going to 
read some more of the risk, the risk comes up higher, and you find out where that sweet spot is for you. You're reaching out there, and there's a point there where, oh yeah, that feels really good. That that That's a place where you're feeling the tensegrity of the arm, the connective tissue is kind of, there's that pull, you're opening the connective tissue, but you're not, not so much that you're having to tense muscles to get there. So your finger, wrist, reach down with the elbow and uh, reach out with the wrist. So we have this, this extension there that allows the arm to get very, uh, very relaxed, but also extremely powerful. This is where we, how we access the chin. And do it with the left arm. Finger, wrist, reach down with the elbow, reach with the wrist. Finger, wrist, reach down with the elbow and reach with the wrist. Finger, wrist, reach down to the elbow, reach with the wrist. So we go back and forth, uh, da, reach. Finger, wrist, reach down with the elbow, reach with the wrist. Finger, wrist, reach down to the elbow, reach with the wrist. As you practice this, it becomes much more fluid, much more organic. You don't even have to break it down because it just, your body knows that, oh, this is the most efficient way to move. You're giving it an alternative to the way that has been passed down in the DNA, the way it's been passed down through you know, decades of life experience. So now we finger, wrist, reach down to the elbow, reach with the wrist, reach with the fingers, open. So the, I think important to, to recognize the difference here. So this time don't, just reach up with your arm and do it very slowly and just notice the effort it takes whenever everything is extended all at once and you're lifting up. Just notice how much of your own body you have to overcome to do that. And if you were to hold your arm like this for say a couple of minutes, you probably get really tired. So it's a uh, it's because your the chi is getting dammed up inside there. You're kinking the hose. And if you're still holding up there, you know, you're starting to notice like, oh, there's some fatigue setting in there. And so let's take that down. And we're going to go the other way. We're going to finger, wrist, reach down with the elbow, reach with the wrist, reach with the fingers, and notice the difference and going at it that way. So the, the, I notice it particularly in my shoulder joint, how that is able to let go of tension much more easily. It's still going to, you're still gonna to have to retrain it. You're still gonna to have to, uh, to do it a number of times to get it so that it's comfortable doing this, but getting that to so do with the left hand, finger, wrist, reach down to the elbow, reach with the wrist, reach with the fingers. Finger, wrist, reach down to the elbow. Reach with the wrist, reach with the fingers. And just alternate back and forth. Very nice and easy. It's like they're floating on the breeze. Yeah, so now you finger, wrist, 
elbow, reach down with the elbow, reach out with the wrist, reach with the fingers. And coming down, reach down with the elbow. So you're gonna, ah, release that first. Then the wrist and the fingers follow. Finger, wrist, reach down with the elbow, reach with the wrist, reach out with the fingers. And coming back, we're taking the elbow first. Just feeling that you're, oh, you're, it just lets that go. And then the wrist bends and the fingers follow. So we get this kind of action. The same thing if I'm going out to the side. So if I have finger, wrist, reach down to the elbow, reach with the wrist, reach with the fingers, elbow, wrist, and fingers, wrist, reach down to the elbow, reach with the wrist, open. Elbow, wrist, fingers, now do with your left hand. Finger, wrist, reach down to the elbow, reach with the wrist, fingers, elbow, wrist, fingers. Notice we're getting this, ah, this kind of very, light, effortless kind of movement. It's like when water, we're, we're flowing. The irony, the paradox is that this is more powerful than this. It's, hmm, this is where we are able to access all that body energy. And this also, you're able to convert this into all kinds of movements in the same way. You're creating that, that sequential activation of joints, finger, wrist, elbow, reach, right? You're able to create all kinds of, of movements, fingers, wrist, elbow. So this then has an incredible amount of tensile strength. It's very soft, supple energy that goes through that. And so we create this, ah, we create this Taiji body that allows the energy to flow freely throughout it. So let's, uh, uh, I think that probably enough on that. Uh, I would like to see if everybody has any questions. And uh, before we move on, Richard, um, when you've when you've gotten finger, wrist, reach with the elbow, reach with the fingers, and now you're inevitably going to lose the tensegrity. Um, Where? in the whole posture if you if you continue to hold it or it seems to me that you know we're always having to reestablish it oh i see what you're saying so yeah so you, I'm, you, just, you I'm wondering if right i'm wondering about reestablishing it without going all the way back down and then coming back up again right it seemed it seemed as though just opening trying to open my shoulder joint a little more put it back a little bit right. Good. So what happens is that's a great question, and this is true. I think in in and all kinds of situations there. Anytime we're talking about reestablishing tensegrity, once you have a baseline of energetic coherence, once you've you know you've got your coherence coherence to a fairly high level, then it doesn't take much to to take it back to you know. 80, 90 percent, 
you know, if you if you have it. So so once if we start off like this and we're out here like that, yeah, I think if I hold this a while, maybe you know it's going to drop a little bit. But how do I how do I get my coherence back? How do I get my tensegrity back? All I have to do is just just move my finger, move my elbow, you know, just reestablish my feeling sense in the body. My oh, feeling back into that. So there's there's this constant pulsing, you know, because the we're structured as humans to want to make sense of stuff. That's where that's why we 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 think we. We like to have meaning to things. If you're not thinking, you're not creating meaning. So there is, but whenever we're involved in the doing, we're beyond meaning. We have to kind of, we have to kind of condense a little bit to get back into like what just happened. Try to think of it and 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 create make some sense of of whatever it is we're doing. But if we are fully engaged with the moment, there's no meaning. There's just now. Meaning is, is an intellectual activity, which we humans happily engage in most of our day. And what we're looking for is the gap between thoughts, where we're able to kind of lengthen that gap to be able to function in that gap where we're able to access a super conscious state, we're not limited by thinking. So whenever, ah, uh, if I notice that I'm saying, boy, I'm really getting tired now. Geez, I wonder how long Rick's gonna be doing this, da, 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 da. I'm starting to think and trying to create meaning in that. And I go, da, 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 and ah, uh, or I just reach my elbow or my wrist or whatever. And then poof, that thought form disappears. I'm back to the gap between thoughts. And so we want to have that. That's our tool. That's a, that gap is not a, um, it's not a, a goal. It is just, it's just one of the sets on the dial that enables us to do certain things. And it's, it's kind of cool for its own sake, but it's also, uh, uh, we like to make sense of things and that requires thinking. Uh, anybody else? Valerina. Um, it's very funny that you brought this up because I've been working on this for a while of okay. not even thinking of the elbows, but I have found that if my wrists aren't completely relaxed, then it doesn't matter what's happening in my shoulders and my if my wrist isn't completely relaxed, yeah, my elbow and my shoulder are just screwed. Um, I find that on coming back and I have to really modulate how much I bend the wrist because if I bend it too much and I know this is just me needing more practice, but what I experience is the tendons in the wrist get tight if I bend them too much. So it's just, you know, going to that certain point and then releasing down. And I also noticed, you know, when we're up, um, I don't feel it so much in my shoulders, not first anyway. I feel it in my biceps. That's what I'll feel tense up. And that's what, once I relax that, then I know my shoulder is going to relax. Uh, so just, basically, it's not a question. It's just a footnote of what I experience. Thank you. That's good. That's a good, good tip for, for us all there, because we're all going to run into that stuff. And that actually makes me think of one other thing that I didn't mention, but it's a uh, a common thing that people do, um, which is whenever you ask them to lift their arm, what they do is this: they rotate their their arm out like that, so the elbow is pointing out this way, and so this creates immediately locks up the shoulder joint, and I have students who, you know, they, they can't do it any other way that, you know, you have to kind of, because it's the, the, the muscles have habituated so much to lifting like that, that they can't do that. 
And but if you just try it right now, you just you reach out there with your elbow out like that, and you can feel the tension in the shoulder to immediately that uh, to make that happen. And then you just rotate that down, and that tension goes away. So this part of the, the the whole thing by reaching down with the elbow, reaching with the wrist, you know, the elbow stays in that relationship. It's lower than the wrist. It doesn't kick out like that. So I think that's that, that's an important thing that unless I call it out, a lot of people are going to miss the uh, the subtlety of that because if that's the way you've always lifted your arms, then why would you change now? Cool. Anybody else? Oh, Sharon. It's just that um, I, as I'm going through it and I've got myself, you know, extended, or when I'm getting there, I feel my like inferior scapula moving, but it's without tension, but it's still, so it still feels like it's coming from there, but without. She's 79. Without tension. That's it. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I think that, that that's a good observation. So, you know, the uh, uh, you know that the shoulder blades, your scapular, and, and the inferior means the lower part of it. And so it your, your scapula is going to make an adjustment as your arm moves. And you want that because that's that's healthy. If, they, if it's locked up because of muscular tension, you're going to have frozen shoulder. You're going to have problems lifting and, and be able to moving freely with your, with your arm. So being able to free that up is really, is really important and, uh, and to have some awareness of that as you're moving. So, you know, whenever we talk about it, doing it without muscle, we're it's kind of a lie because muscles are always involved. It's just that we're not focusing on muscular contraction as being the driving force. Even though it's involved, it's always gonna be involved. It's just, it's, it has been um, uh, overridden by our attention to the connective tissue system, which is where we get our, our uh, that, transmission of energy and information instantaneously throughout the whole body mind and that's the essence of what we're what we're uh, trying to do here in in this practice getting so we're more and more aware of that connective tissue connection and that it how it unifies the whole system so okay anybody else before we uh, move on to the next thing Okay. Oh, good. Okay, great. So why don't we stand up? Let's, uh, so let's begin by just establishing our three pillars. We won't take a long time on this. We want to get that so it's, it's really solid. So we're tapping into the big cheese. You feel the balls of your feet. These are unlocked. Sinking into your feet. Reach with the crown of your head. Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back, drop your sacrum, and allow your pelvic bowl to level out. Feel yourself sinking even more. Kind of push away from the earth and uh, spiral down just so you can really get that feeling of Sung Kwa, you're, you're sinking more, releasing the hip joint and sinking more and more into that. Point with your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence. Reach with the elbows, reach and open the shoulder joints. Feel 
uh, we got our three pillars established now, our energetic coherence, our central equilibrium, and we've unkinked the hose. So very common opening to a Taiji form is to just bring your arms up like this, then down like that. We're gonna just do that a few times. Just feel the balls of your feet, set the knees and release at the hip joints, you're bowing forward slightly, you're kind of ah, settling down. And this establishes that yin connection that opens the energy gates in the qua. And as you do that, you point down, reach down with the fingers, particularly the index fingers. And you feel that, that energetic connection. You're still reaching out with the elbows. And you're feeling that downward reaching that lengthens the sinews, lengthens the connective tissue. And then as you straighten up, you feel the fingers, bend the wrists, reach down to the elbows, reach with the wrists. Shoulders are very relaxed. Fingers are just sort of hanging. Now here's where you want to find your sweet spot. You want to find the place where that's, that's the optimum place for your hands to go. And notice that my elbows are lower than my wrists here. As I'm coming up, my elbows are lower than my wrists. I'm not turning out like that. They're lower than the wrists. So we're ah, feeling this, you're reaching out and up with the wrists and we're reaching with the elbows. Re elbows are kind of reaching down and forward with the elbows. Now reach with the fingers and reach out a little bit more so you're feeling between your between your scapula, between your shoulder blades. You're feeling that kind of uh, opening in your back there. Feeling that extension. You find that sweet spot where it doesn't require a whole lot of effort to maintain your position. So now you've got your position of optimum energetic connection for this moment. And that could change in five minutes, but right now you're looking for the sweet spot now. So now you feel the balls of your feet, you set the knees and you're gonna bow forward with the, from the, from the claw, and reach down with the elbows. You're pressing down that opening the shoulder joints again, reach down with the wrists bending at the wrists and the fingers are trailing. And you get down to here and your wrists are still bent and just feel into your hands and notice there's like kind of a chi dam there. And that's okay because now we're going to reach down with the fingers and straighten up and there's this big rush into your hands and it just fills up the, your, your circulation improves dramatically. Your hands are getting much more uh, circulation and micro circulation, but also the chi is building up there. It's reflecting the flow of chi throughout your whole body mind. Now we're gonna do this again, feel the balls of the feet, set the knees and bow forward from the claw, release. Reach. Okay, and point with the index fingers. Bend the wrists. 
reach with the wrists, reach down to the elbows, and now reach up and out with the wrists. And notice you're not pushing them. They're kind of getting up there almost on their own. Reach with the fingers open between the shoulder blades. Feel that powerful energetic connection that's occurring. You're still in the balls of your feet. That doesn't mean you're leaning, you know, tipping over. You're, the weight's throughout your whole foot, but the balls of your feet are where you're feeling that point of contact, that energetic point of contact. Now feel the balls of your feet, set the knees and bow forward from the claw and reach down to the elbows. Bend the wrists, reach down with the wrists. Feel that chi in your hands, in your arms. Notice that there is circulation in your hands, there's circulation in your arm, in your, in your fingers, there's chi there. So it's not, you know, that chi dam doesn't block it, it uh, block it entirely, but it, it kind of holds, holds it back for a second. So it's like pulling back the bowstring so that now when you straighten up and reach down, it comes in a gush. We've got the point with the index fingers reaching with the wrists. There's a, a, a gate there at the wrists. We've got the elbow gate. We have the shoulder gate. The quad is another gate. We're activating all these. You may feel a lot of heat in your feet right now. And that's, um, yeah, that's perfectly understandable. And you can, if it becomes too uncomfortable, you can just lift your heels and and disperse it. But what we're doing is we're, there's a lot of energy that's that's exchanging between the earth and your feet through the bubbling well points. Again, you're gonna feel the ball, set the knees, bow from the qua, exhale. So this is the yin movement. And then yang, we're going to Inhale, fingers, wrists, reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists, reach with the fingers. And exhale, ball, di, qua, bow, elbows, wrists. Yin. Yang, inhale, straighten up, reach down, open the joints, exhale, bow, inhale, fingers, wrists, elbows, reach with the wrists, reach with the fingers, open, exhale, yin, Elbows, wrists, fingers. Inhale, yang, open. Now just with the right hand. Sink into your right leg, ball, knee, qua, fingers, wrist, elbow, wrist, reach. Ball, knee, qua, Fing elbow, wrist, fingers, left foot, ball, knee, Claw spiral down and fingers, wrists, elbow, reach. 
open. Palm knee cross, barrel down, elbow, wrist, fingers. Open. So just stand there for a moment and just feel into your, feel into your body. Feel the energy circulating. The simplicity of this, of this exercise is something that you want to include in whatever you're doing. Start to kind of make it part of your, the way you move. That way it becomes more and more just part of you. Not just something you do, but it's just the way you are. Okay. Spiral, spiral down to the left, step in, deep breath, inhale, and exhale. Even here, elbows, wrists, fingers. Do that again. So inhale, fingers, wrists, elbows, reach, reach with the wrists. Open fingers and then, ah. Elbows, wrists, fingers. Please have a seat. How'd it go? Good, 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 good. good. Rick. I noticed at the end there, when the second time we did the big breath, I'm usually in the process of releasing and disappearing my chi at that point. But this time when the new elbow and wrist thing, I felt a rush of returned energy. Uh -huh. so, it was kind of, so, so uh, then I immediately compensated and said, no, no, disappear right now. Don't need more. We're trying to get rid of it now. Are we trying to get rid of it now? Or is it okay when we're in that process to bring in a new rush with this new technique? Well, that's exactly right. So your observation is spot on because what happens is by getting rid of it, we're dispersing, intentionally dispersing stale chi. You know, stuff we've already, we've already played with. It's like exhaling, you know, you're, you're breathing out, you're discharging, you know, waste products. And, and so, oh, we're doing that. And so what happens is, oh, there's more coming in. But that's, that's exactly what we're looking for. It's the nature chi that's coming in to fill that gap. So you know, we are disappearing our attachment to all that energy, you know, we're not, uh, we're not packing it in and uh, trying to get like really, you know, all dense with energy. We're, poof, we're saying, no, no, there is an inexhaustible supply of chi in the universe. And if I learn to resonate with it, which is basically resonating with Tao, you know, we, then I have access to more than I need in order to uh, to function in the world. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So that, that's good. Good observation. Now, Sharon. Um, just an observation for myself. Um, at one point when we were, my arms were out in front of, in, pretty much in front of me. And I felt, I had my eyes closed, but I felt like I was huge. I... I, I <laughs> I felt like I was all out, you know, but my, but I was here. Yeah. You know? Beautiful. Beautiful. 
yeah, that's that young expansion, you know, it's like, oh, he was that, um, 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 we're eating the chi, you know, <laughs> and then, ah, oh, we throw it away. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's so beautiful, beautiful. Okay, anybody else? Great. Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Love you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. It was excellent. Excellent. Love you all. <coughs> Ciao. Hey.